Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today I wanted to talk about the GE tax again. I know I made a video on this four or five months ago, but recently in a Q&A they mentioned the GE tax again and kind of loosely proposed uh, what they wanted it to look like. So I thought it would be pertinent to make another video. Now today I really wanted to calculate exactly how much money their tax would actually remove from the game. I'm going to give my opinion on whether I think it's too extreme or if I think the amount of gold is necessary to keep the economy healthy. And overall, I want to give my opinion on how much I think their proposed GE tax would affect the economy. Now I understand in the Q&A it's not uh, formal or anything, it was just kind of a discussion. Yet that is what we have to work off of here, but just keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Now to begin with here, what is the proposed tax amount? Now, during the Q&A, they mentioned a few different numbers and a few different methods of taxing the GE. The most straightforward one would be a flat tax on all transactions. They mentioned 2-3%. to Now, I don't think that number would be set in stone, and I think it's highly unlikely that if they did actually implement a tax, that they would go with 2-3%. to I think that is very high. So it's just an initial discussion, but that is the number they put forward. Now, the other tax that they proposed is kind of interesting and it would only tax uh, money that you get back from underpaying for something. For example, if you put an offer in for 100,000 GP and you got your item plus 10,000 GP back, uh, they would only tax that 10,000 GP by maybe a higher percentage or even the 2 to 3%. Now this kind of has its own issues but we'll leave it for now and focus on the flat rate because it's a little easier to understand and probably the more likely tax that they would actually implement. Now a tax of 2-3%, to how much would that actually be taken out of the economy on a daily basis, on a yearly basis? Now luckily there is a bit of data from late 2018, early 2019 of Grand Exchange transactions. Now this graph shows the amount of items traded as well as the total value of the items traded. For example, at the beginning of 2018, the total volume of items was around 5 billion per day and the total value was around 3 trillion per day. The total value kind of slowly climbed all year with a bit of a spike around the release of mobile. However, the total volume spiked very hard when mobile was released. Now, the most recent data that we have for Grand Exchange transactions is from the very beginning of 2019, which shows a total value per day of around 5 trillion GP in items and around 2.5 billion items traded per day. Now this data is now about a year old, but I'm going to just assume that the most recent data point uh, for 2019 is fairly accurate for now. While yes, the total value of items has been slowly climbing, that year had the release of mobile which would have influxed the economy with a lot more transactions and a lot more gold. So I think 5 trillion GP a day is probably a fairly good estimate, even for today's economy. So at around 5 trillion GP in items traded per day, a 2% tax would take out around 100 billion GP per day, or around 36.5 trillion GP per year. A 3% tax would take out around 150 billion a day, or 54.7 trillion per year. Now if we compare that to the dual arena tax, uh, which takes out around 20 billion a day. Now that was taken from Mod Lottie's post from probably about a year and a half ago at this point, but still 20 bill a day is around 7.3 trillion per year, uh, which is already quite a bit of money, but that would mean a 3% GE tax would take out seven and a half times more than the dual arena tax. And a 2% tax on the GE would take out pretty much exactly five times more than the dual arena tax. And realistically, I think I'm lowballing these numbers a bit because I feel like the GE today could have more than 5 trillion GP traded a day. For example, if we just look at two items, the Twisted Bow and the Grazzy Rapier. The Twisted Bow has around 800 traded per day or around 880 bill worth of transactions. And the Grazzy Rapier has around 1200 traded per day or around 200 bill of transactions. That alone, just from those two items, is already a trillion GP a day, or a fifth of the market's total. So I definitely think a five trillion a day is probably lowballing it by quite a bit, but it's the only data that we have for certain, really. So now let's have a look at how the GE tax would affect flipping or merching, and I would just like to give a shout out to a user called Just For Show, who has given me his opinion on the GE tax and kind of helped me come up with the idea for the video. So right now on the Grand Exchange, merchant or flipping is what would be called a zero-sum game. 
Pretty much what that means is that everything is balanced within the system, this system being the Grand Exchange. For example, if you lose 100,000 GP checking a margin, uh, someone else has gained or multiple people have gained that exact amount. However, with a GE tax, this would actually be a negative sum game. Now, a really good example of a negative sum game would be a game of poker. On paper, everything seems pretty equal. If you win money, you take it from your opponent. However, in most poker games, there is what is called a rake, and that is a scaled commission that, that is given back to the casino, and it's usually a percentage that varies quite a bit. So for example, if you play a game of chance at a casino and you have a 50% chance of winning every single time, you'd pretty much always end up with less money because of the commission or the percent fee that the casino is taking. So bringing this back to flipping on the Grand Exchange, right now I would argue that you kind of have a competitive advantage when you're flipping. Over the long run you're going to be making money even if individual days you lose lots of money and individual days you make more. Anyone who is moderately familiar with how to flip will overall be making money over the long term. However, with a 2 to 3% tax per transaction, those odds are going to be stacked against you very, very quickly. For example, if we assume a 2% tax on your buy and the sell, that would mean you need pretty much a 4% margin or more to even break even on that item, which currently is very unlikely. Now, I do agree that the margins would widen on pretty much everything with this tax, but still having to get a 4% margin or more is still a pretty big ask. So now if you find an item with a 6% margin, you successfully flip that, two thirds of your profit are gonna be going to a tax, one third is gonna be your profit. So this is gonna make it pretty difficult for people to get into flipping because the risk is most likely gonna be a lot higher. It's not gonna be impossible, but it will be riskier. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier, but they did mention in the Q&A is they would want to put a tax cap. For example, 100,000 GP would be the maximum tax amount. That would kind of prevent you from getting a one mil tax on a Twisted Bow transaction or something like that. So that alone would reduce the amount you're getting in tax from the Grand Exchange by quite a lot. Now, they actually did a straw poll on this just to see how the community felt. And around 43% were against it, 33% uh, were for it, and the remaining percentage was going to be dependent on the tax level. And I think it would fall into somewhat option number one and somewhat option number three. So that kind of brings me into my last point, and that is the Grand Exchange tax necessary. The short answer is I don't think it is. The Dual Arena tax was already very successful in bringing out a lot of gold, and... Uh, Mod Kiernan himself in the Q&A mentions that they're not even sure if a, a extra gold sink is that required. They have all the data so we don't really know for sure, but I really don't think gold inflation is that big of a problem. Personally, I think making a ton of micro decisions is going to be better for the game than making giant macro sweeping changes like the Dual Arena tax or the Grand Exchange tax. Now, I'm not saying they're not going to be effective, but I think things like modifying drop tables to make certain items rarer that have been devalued really hard or adding in other item sinks. Obviously tackling the botting problem is gonna be a huge benefit, but I think those things are gonna be a lot more effective. Just for an example, let's look at the history of a few uh, fairly popular items. Uh, one is gonna be sharks. If we look back at May 15th, uh, the price of shark is around 1,000. It's fluctuated a lot in price over the last five years, but I mean, currently it's worth around 1200 and that is just recently that it's even that expensive. So the price of the item has been affected a lot, but the main contributor is updates to the game and bots. And I really don't think gold inflation has played a big part in that. Once again, looking at another item, Red Chinchampas, back in May 2015, around 1100, currently around 1800, but even just three or four months ago, it was worth about 1100 again. Maybe a slight increase, but not in my opinion, a clear indicator that is showing that gold is being devalued or anything like that. Now, if the moderation team was bent on getting another gold sink in the game and they wanted a GE tax, definitely cutting it tenfold or something would probably be acceptable. A 0.2% or 0.3% tax uh, would be removing 1.8 trillion to 3.6 trillion a year, which I think would be good enough. One last point is that if the GE tax is too high, a lot of people may not trade on the GE, which would therefore reduce the overall uh, wealth traded in the Grand Exchange, which then would reduce the amount in tax revenue that uh, is taken out of the game. So I think a 0.2 or 0.3% tax could actually yield more revenue than a 2 or 3% tax just because more people would continue using the GE for all of their transactions as opposed to doing it person to person, which has its own set of issues as well. Anyway, that is pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. If you have anything else you want to discuss, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.